we're going to make um, a bingo board for you. Piece of paper. We're going to fold it in half. We're going to fold it in half again. A third time and a fourth time. All right, so you're going to end up with 16 squares. So this is going to be your bingo board. Let's say we are going to be doing our threes. So in, the squ in each square, you are going to write a multiple of three. Multiples of three are all the products in our multiplication table. They're also all the numbers you say when you count by three. You can either play this game um, up to the twelfth multiple, in other words, three times twelve, or play it to the tenth multiple, three times ten. The standards for third grade are through the tenth multiple. For fourth grade, they are responsible for the facts through, through the twelfth multiple. Now chances are they're going to want to have one of each at least, but you want to put them in in a random order, mix them all up, and then you're going to have a few boxes um, that don't have a number in them. So that means you're going to repeat. Pick whatever multiple of three you want to do and repeat a few. When you play bingo, uh, if you have two people playing, they can each have their own bingo board that they make up, so each bingo board is different. Or your counter you could use pennies. If you're using the same board, you might want to do pennies and nickels so you know whose counter belongs to who. You can use a regular deck of cards to determine what number you're going to be multiplying by three. If you're only going to the 10th multiple, you're going to um, go ace through 10. If you're going to go to 12, you can decide that maybe the jack is going to be 11 and the queen is going to be 12. Three, three times three. So whatever you pull, you multiply it by three. The first one to get four in a row in any direction is the winner. One thing I would say, um, if you're playing, again, let's just say you your child was unsure of what three times six is. Instead of having them count by ones, it would be beneficial if they could maybe count by threes instead of counting, uh, what did I say, six times three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's probably um, the lowest level of trying to figure out a fact. If they can count by threes, you're up to a higher level. But even better than that is if they knew what 5 times 3 was, so I know what 5 groups of 3 is. I'm trying to figure out how much 6 groups of 3. So that means I need one more group of 3. So if you can use a fact that they already know to figure it out. they were trying to figure out 8 times 3. Again, if you go back to that 5 times 3 is 15. So that's 5 groups of 3. Well, 8 groups of 3 would be how many more groups of 3? It would be another 3 groups of 3. You can give them support in any way you need to draw out eight groups of three for the children and show them how the five groups of three is the 15, and then they have three more groups of three, which is the nine, figuring out how much eight times three is. I hope you uh, have fun with this, and bye.